Hi everyone. Um, I'm back for an overview of chapter four. Um, and in this chapter, you're going to learn about court systems, in particular, um, the two different types, the state system and the federal system. And um, as you will see in the chapter, um, the federal system has uh, three tiers, the district courts, the courts of appeal, which are sometimes called circuit courts, um, and the U.S. Supreme Court. And um, typically, if it's a federal case, it's filed in federal court. And if it's a uh, state crime or state civil liability case, it stays in the state courts. However, um, if there's, say, a case that uh, is a criminal case in California and the defendant has been, say, convicted but is arguing um, a constitutional issue, well, then a writ of certiorari could be filed to the U.S. Supreme Court and the court might hear it. Um, although the court only accepts about 2% of the cases that uh, are um, submitted to it every year. And so only a small number of cases actually get to the Supreme Court each year. It's got to be a really important constitutional issue for the court to um, accept it. And um, one of the um, things about the Supreme Court is that we typically say that it's, quote, the law of the land. So if there's a lower court decision that ultimately is accepted by the U.S. Supreme Court um, to be heard, um, then whatever the U.S. Supreme Court decides will be the, the new law of the land. Um, on the other hand, when the court turns down uh, or does not accept the writ of certiorari, um, then that doesn't mean that the court thinks that the case is good or not good. Um, the lower court's um, decisions stand um, and it doesn't have any precedence and, and it doesn't really mean anything that the court turned it down. Um, so I want to make that clear. Um, in the state courts, um, we typically have the two different types of causes of action, um, civil liability and, of course, criminal cases. And civil liability is where you go if you feel you've been wronged by someone um, and um, a perfect example of this, I'm sure many of you have seen um, a TV show or two or maybe more of um, things like Judge Judy or there's a few other judges out there. Um, those cases are, are heard in, in, the, in small claims court. Okay? And so anybody um, can go to small claims court. Um, I believe right now in California, the limit is $15,000. So if you are suing somebody for $15,000 or less, you can go to a small claims uh, court. There are no lawyers allowed. It doesn't mean a lawyer can't help prepare you uh, for your oral argument in front of the judge, but um, each party has to represent themselves. Um, the plaintiff will be heard first, then the defendant, and then the judge will um, ask questions, just like in Judge Judy or the others. Uh, and then ultimately, then the judge will make a decision. Um, and award damages um, to one party or the other. And um, so civil that's that's a very simple civil case. Um, but of course, if it's worth if you're if you want more money than that, if you feel you've been wronged for much larger than fifteen thousand dollars, then you would uh, file in a superior court. and then that is where uh, your case would go through the process. Um, and of course, in both civil and criminal cases, you can have a jury. Um, of course, you are guaranteed a, uh, the right to a, a jury trial if you want in um, criminal cases in the Constitution, but we also um, grant that right in civil cases. Um, all states do that. It's in their state constitutions. Um, but if you could waive that. If you just want the judge to decide your case, you can do that too. Um, and to be honest with you, if I were um, to be accused of a crime and I were standing trial, I'd probably want the judge to decide the case noise out there. Um, I'd probably want the judge to decide the case because I, I'm not so sure I trust the average person walking down the street. Um, jury trials can take a long time. They're long days. Um, and I'm not so sure that people aren't zoning out while they're sitting on a jury, you know, thinking about what, what they're going to get for lunch or, you know, um, thinking about seeing their partner or spouse or kid at the end of the day uh, or thinking about their bills and how they're not making any money because they're sitting there at jury duty. Um, any number of things. Yeah, noisy up there for Sunday. Um, anyway, so um, you'll you'll learn about the criminal justice process and the different um, things that have to happen um, from the initial appearance to the preliminary hearing to the arraignment, etc. 
Um, one of the things that I do want you to consider um, when you're reading about the Supreme Court is uh, the justices. And there's a discussion about the, the justices and, and how they are appointed for life. Um, there was an issue that came up back in 2016. Um, and people have argued this before, too, um, over, over the years. Um, some people argue that justices, sh the Supreme Court justices, should be expanded to 11. Some even say 13. And there is no magic number because there's nothing in the Constitution that says um, there has to be a certain number. Um, in fact, it wasn't always nine. Uh, so some people say, well, maybe we should expand it to you know, 11 or 13 and make arguments as to why. Um, and uh, still others argue, well, no, instead of expanding it, let's just make term limits. Uh, currently, justice is served for life, as I said, so maybe having someone serve maximum of 10 years or 15 or 20, various uh, term limits have been uh, suggested. Um, and this issue really um, sprang up again in uh, 2016. In February 2016, Justice Antonin Scalia, um, who was a, a fairly staunch conservative um, judge, um, he died suddenly. Uh, I think it was a heart attack in February 2016. And Barack Obama, who was president at the time, um, nominated within about a month or so, he nominated uh, a gentleman by the name of Merrick Garland. And um, the Senate Majority Leader at the time, uh, Mitch McConnell, um, said, well, the Judiciary Committee is not going to have Senate hearings um, because we believe that the next president should uh, have the opportunity to, to nominate the next Supreme Court justice, the next justice to replace Scalia. Um, now, that's not typically what happens. In fact, there have been over the years uh, of the U.S.'s existence, instances in which even during an election year, a Supreme Court judge has died and the president in office at the time nominated uh, an individual and the, the hearings were held and the person was confirmed. Um, so it's not the case that always um, in the past the new president, uh, the, the position was filled and the new president got to fill. Um, and uh, so, uh, long story short, um, President Trump won uh, in November 12th. Then candidate Trump won in November 2016. In January 17, he was sworn in. And shortly after that, he nominated um, Neil Gorsuch um, as uh, Supreme Court Justice. The hearings were held and, and Gorsuch was confirmed. Um, so um, because of what happened with Scalia's um, death and the replacement not being, uh, not moved forward by the Senate Judiciary Committee, um, that is where the issue of maybe adding additional um, justices or putting in term limits for justices um, sprang up again. So um, just something to consider. And there is a discussion that you will um, engage in about Judge um, Aaron Persky, who was recalled up in Santa Clara County in Northern California um, in November 2018 um, as a result of having um, imposed what was considered by many people a very light sentence um, for, on a young gentleman who was a former Stanford student. He was a swimmer on, on the swim team. He was convicted of uh, having raped a young woman uh, on Stanford's campus. Um, and so you'll, you'll read about uh, what happened and read the pros and the cons of, um, you know, recalling judges versus not recalling them. Um, of course, there is um, ample in, in the California state constitution. Um, there are reasons why a judge could be recalled, um, but they typically focus on either, you know, some type of criminal activity like taking bribes or, um, you know, um, doing something criminal. Um, and that would be a good reason for recalling a judge. But um, we, we typically don't recall judges just because we don't like the sentences they give. Um, so um, I'm, again, asking you to think about that and then participate in the discussion. Um, so that's about it for Chapter 4. And um, I hope you enjoy uh, reading uh, about the court systems. And I know it's a little bit dry. Um, it's certainly not as interesting as, as the first couple of chapters, at least to me. 
Um, and the coming chapters, um, I, I promise we'll, we'll pick up, especially when we get to juvenile justice and criminal law, et cetera. Um, but, um, you know, it's important to know about this too. So um, bear with it, bear with it. You'll get it done. I'll see you next week.